News. Welcome back this morning to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. We're chatting this morning with Martin George, Chairman of the Tobago Business Chamber, and as well as Attorney at Law about the Tobago Business Chamber on the Caribbean Airlines flights. Good morning to you, Mr. George. Yes, hi. Good morning to you and good morning to your viewers and good morning to your listeners. I understand you have viewers and listeners in Kajistan. You have them in Azerbaijan. You have them in Moscow. You have them in Trinity. All over the world, they follow your show. And I'm happy to hear that. Thank you so much. And we understand that you are really enjoying yourself this, this time around here, Mr. George. <laughs> well, I, I try to make the most of life wherever I do. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Mr. George, let's, let's chat this morning about the Tobago Base Business Chamber and Caribbean Airlines flight. Um, give us an idea. Give, give our viewers this morning an idea of what is happening. Um, why is it? Why are things so difficult? Give us an idea of, of you know, where we're heading this morning. Right. Okay. So the thing is, I mean, the, the challenge remains the connection between Trinidad and Tobago. And I have described it as a basic human right, a fundamental human right. Because if you know a constitution which guarantees freedom of movement, if we in Tobago are to exercise is a freedom of movement. Can you think if you have a medical emergency at 3 a.m. and you need to get urgently to medical services in Trinidad, you cannot do so. You have to wait till the morning time, till the sunrise, and then go to the airport, try to beg somebody, explain to them your situation, hope that they, you know, um, are sympathetic to you and give you an opportunity to put you on a flight. This is unacceptable. And I always use the simple example. And I say, listen, if San Fernando and all of South Trinidad were cut off from North Trinidad, that there was no access whatsoever. The government would move heaven and earth in order to ensure that access is restored immediately. Why is it Very that true. we are facing such challenges and such problems with simple flight access between Trinidad and Tobago? You have Caribbean Airlines speaking about, first they, they, they went on this um, trip to Qatar with the, the, with the Prime Minister and they were talking about wanting to, you know, do a partnership with Qatar Airways. You know, where Qatar is, how far Qatar is from Trinidad and Tobago. So how could you be thinking of wanting to do mergers or, or plans with Qatar Airways and you cannot even service your own domestic air grid? You know, there, there, there's a local saying in, in our, our local parlance, dance a yard before you dance abroad. If, if you understand me, I mean, if you'll pardon my use of the vernacular in that sense, because the, the, the fact of the matter is if we cannot even manage our own in terms of our own domestic average connection to have a safe reliable you know continuous you know transfer of people then how are you talking about you know they they want to have a tobago to new york flight a tobago to Barbados. so how it is that you have planes for that you have money for that how those things are not issues Nowhere have you, have you seen Caribbean Airlines complain and say, well, we don't have money to have a Tobago to New York flight, you know, but a simple Trinidad to Tobago flight. Once a 30 reaches and any Tobagonian who wants to get back home is stranded in the airport, you basically have to spend the night in, in Piaco Airport. We all know that as a fact and wait and hope that you could beg and push and, you know, bamboozle your way onto a flight the next morning. It is unacceptable and I will never stop saying so. Now, you know, Mr. George, we have been dealing with this issue uh, for a very long time. I want to say since King Hatchet was a hammer, uh, but it's been for a very long time, you know, being <laughs> able to just simply pick up one day and decide, I want to go to Trinidad to spend the day and being able to do so. What are your suggestions? How, how can we move past this? Because I feel as though every year, every year, I, I mean, th th it happens over and over. J July, August vacation, uh, November, December, uh, January to March. Wh why? What can we do? What measures can be put in place? 
Well, the, the fact of the matter is that Caribbean Airlines needs to get its act together. And by trying to, you know, play the blame game as they did, you know, and that's why we castigated them so severely, because they were trying to basically blame the Tobago Air Bridge for their losses over the years. And that's unacceptable because Caribbean Airlines is an airline that has been making a loss since it's born, since it's a baby. Since it's in Pampas, Caribbean Airlines making a loss. So why are you blaming the Tobago Air Bridge? We are not responsible for your losses. It's your gross mismanagement over the years, your failed ventures, your flights are fancy, all the you know failed investments and squander mania that has taken place. That is what is responsible for your losses. Don't blame Tobagonians and the Tobago Air Bridge. Don't blame the average Trinidadian who's simply trying to get to Tobago for a vacation and wants to be able to get back without the hassle. So when you think of it, think of how much revenue Tobago has lost by Trinidadians who say, listen, it's easier for me to get a flight to Grenada. It's easier for me to get a flight to Miami. It's easier for me to get a flight to Barbados. So therefore, those who can afford it, they choose those options. They say, look, it's just too much stress and hassle to get a confirmed flight to and from Tobago with myself, my friends, my family, etc. So it's crippling our Tobago economy. We're talking about upcoming events. We're talking about the Tobago Carnival. The THA has been begging and pleading with Cal, give us some commitment that you are putting on extra flights. And they refuse to do so. They refuse to give that commitment. I mean, you had the Chief Secretary actually saying, listen, I am willing to put up the money to keep the airport open to have the additional flights and still you have Cal not responding to that. We have our Prime Minister who is a Tobagonian and I don't know, is it that he's not listening to the pleas and the cries of his people in Tobago or is it that he's not hearing them or is it that he's ignoring the cries of his people in Tobago? Why is this still a talking point? As you yourself said, is years we've been talking about this. Why is this still an issue? Okay, let me ask you here. If clients slash customers, to Begonians, Trin Begonians, were asked to pay more for flights between Trinidad and Tobago, would that help? Could that make a difference? Okay, so what I have suggested is that, look, you look at having a two-tier structure if that um, helps to ease things. You can have a business class fare and an economy fare, the same way that you have in normal flights all over. So in other words, if it is that you have, for instance, a standby list and, um, you know, someone says, well, hey, listen, I need to get urgently you say well hey listen you know we have a business class fare which say for instance okay the normal economy fare is 300 the business class fare is 500 if you really need to get uh, gently you pay the business class fare and you get on a flight immediately that is going to try to help to ease the burden but we don't want to create at the same time a class structure in other words so the rich and powerful could get on ahead of the ordinary citizens so i think what they will have to do in addition to that is ensure that anyone who has a tobago identification card or tobago driver's permit in other words once you have identification showing a tobago address showing that you do reside Idly or habitually in Tobago, then you ought to be entitled to the economy fare, even at the preferential, you know, seating, you know. So therefore, that helps to balance it out. Because I am not going to advocate. I saw Mr. Ramesh Lachmedial make a statement, um, former director of the Civil Aviation Authority. He made the suggestion of the two-tier structure, but I, um, I also saw him suggest that for Tobagonians ought to be some concession. And in that regard, I agree with him. All right. Is this similar, this two-tier this two -tier system, is this similar to what the Port Authority recently started doing with the uh, premium and economy tickets on the, on the ferry? No, no. The thing is totally different. What they are offering is basically that you still line up in the hot sun, you still heard it like cattle in the in, in the hot sun and sweating and waiting there and lining up. And basically you join in more for what they consider a premium seat. But at the end of the day, you don't get any 
priority scheduling for a sailing. What I am suggesting is a priority scheduling by way of the use of the premium payment for those who really genuine emergencies or you know business persons who need to get to and from Tobago quickly, but you ensure that you have for Tobagonians persons who can produce an ID card or a driver's permit showing a Tobago residential address, you ensure that they are able to have access to the same priority seating or priority flight without paying the premium. So it's totally different from what the Port Authority has, has implemented. All right. Well, thank you so much this morning, Mr. Martin George. I know you've got a full day ahead of you. <laughs> Uh, but very quickly here, just before we go, yeah, um, what is that call that you'd like to leave with Tobigonians this morning? Well, certainly I would like Tobigonians to understand that when we are rallying for these things, when we are making the call for these things, it is not something that we are asking for as a luxury or a favor. It's a basic fundamental human rights. I invite persons to look at your constitution, look at the chapter in um, section four, which speaks about your right to freedom of movement. And you recognize this is exactly what I'm saying. We are a an island nation. If your freedom of movement between one island and the other is curtailed in any way, then it appears to me, prima facie, to be a fundamental breach of your constitutional rights. So we need to look at it in that context. We, meet, we need to remove the political blinkers and blinders and you know remove the lenses which tend to keep us apart and focus on the things that unite us rather than those that divide us. All right. Thank you so much there. Thank you so much there, Mr. Martin George. I mean, trust that you have a really great day. Uh, continue on. Be safe wherever you are.